I had heard about the Catalyst suit uh, for a number of months, and I was lucky enough to reach out to, uh, to Bjorn Walterman, who is the founder and CEO, and get him to agree to come. Uh, when I was here last time, I tried it. I loved it. I, it, it made me sore for the next three days of the program, so enjoy it. You're going to get a chance to, to, to try it out. And I bought one, and I've used it at home as part of my regular workout program. And I just went at lunch today and did it. So uh, you'll hear this over and over again. I think sarcopenia, the loss of muscle mass as we age, is one of the critical uh, challenges that we face. Um, it causes a number of negative uh, effects, including your muscles are a repository of stem cells. Uh, and as you age, one of the leading uh, cause of deaths are falls, um, broken pelvis, broken hip. So uh, your job is to maintain and gain muscle mass uh, as, you're, as you're going. So Bjorn is founder and CEO of Catalyst. Uh, he's a serial tech entrepreneur an economist by training, a fitness expert on a mission. Uh, Bjorn, a pleasure to have you back, pal. Thank you for the work that you're doing. Let's give it up for Bjorn, please. Thank you. You might have heard this um, in other presentations earlier. Um, we will reach longevity escape velocity, and you know we all want to get 120, which I learned four weeks ago, um, in about 10 to 12 years. And Ray Kurzweil said this in 18. So yeah, we're a few years away from that. So pretty much we can now fix the age problem, so not dying anymore. But the question is, how do we make the most out of it? Uh, we not just want to be only alive, we want to be vital. We want to really like, you know, thrive and, and really enjoy our lives and not just survive. With muscles, as, as Peter just said, it's like losing muscle mass and sarcopenia is uh, for men and women, um, for women actually more than for men because they start at a lower level and have lower testosterone levels and so on and so forth. For men, uh, I have these numbers from like Harvard, um, men will lose about 30% of their muscle mass during their lifetime. Uh, when the study was done, um, these individuals didn't attend the program here. They assumed 85 years. <laughs> so with 85 years, you will have lost roughly 30% of your muscle mass. But it's not only that. It's also the composition of your muscle fibers will change. Uh, we have. Uh, roughly like high level two types of muscle fibers, so-called slow twitch muscle fibers and fast twitch muscle fibers, where the slow twitch muscle fibers are more economical and you know, that's what we use on an everyday basis. Um, and if we want to move very quickly or we need extreme loads, like towards the end of the you know, activation of a muscle, uh, fast twitch muscle fibers get added. Um, and they allow us, for example, to uh, be very extremely strong in certain situations, but also to react fast. Um, which is, for example, when you're tripping. Uh, you're going to lose those over time. Um, so the slow twitch muscle fibers will retain, the fast twitch muscle fibers will go away. Um, so you're not only using um, a volume metric um, amount of your muscles, you will also use quality of your muscle mass. And this is what the graph basically looks like. Um, at 85, you're already bad, and I should have probably extended this to 120. Next time I'm going to do that. It just gets worse from there. Um, the Mayo Clinic and everybody who knows anything about um, the world of training says you have to really use it or lose it, and we need exercise. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, it means we're doing uh, two to three days a week where we do about 15 exercises, um, 12 to 15 reps at an exertion level of uh, six to seven which means we're really working out to maintain. The problem is, over time, and first of all, we don't have time for that. 
Uh, we need very high motivation to do that. Um, and as we age and our joints and ligaments and so on and so forth, like we have injuries and they add up on top of each other, it just gets worse. So our ability to do what we need to do to maintain our muscle mass is also diminishing over time. So the challenge that we're now facing is we grow older, but physical exercise hasn't changed in 3,000 years. That's my thesis, and I'm going to back it up. There has been a lot of innovation in the world of physical exercise, and they do two things. We're going to hear about it a little bit later from some other people. Um, they have do, done two things. They track what we're doing, and they motivate us to do more. So they either bolt a screen on something that we've done for a long time, and they put like, very attractive individuals on there, and they shout at us with great music, and they still want us to do the same thing that we've been doing before. So uh, the top quick, uh, the upper image is uh, from 600 BC in Greece. Um, so we make it harder to move and we throw a ball. And uh, the lower picture is from present day. We're pretty st still much doing the same thing. Which means we haven't really innovated in the workout itself. And we can see this in the data. The percentage of the population that is in shape is the same as it was uh, probably even diminishing over time. It's going down, it's not going up. So all the innovation is not really doing anything in making working out easier and more efficient. So we have to upgrade the workout itself. And the way we do this is we have to remove barriers to success. So whatever we're doing, um, a hip replacement cannot be a problem anymore, or a maybe three bypasses cannot be a problem anymore, because these are all things that today hinder me from working out. So this is me 10 years ago um, in Berlin, uh, where I found EMS training. I have a lower back condition where between my L3 and L5, I basically have very little disc. Um, I found out about it when I was 20. I was in the Air Force in Germany uh, and I was in flight school and they said, like, I had a small accident and they x-rayed me and they said, with this, you shouldn't sit on a plane for an you know, extended period of time. You shouldn't sit. So that thing was gone. Um, like Peter said, I became an economist um, and was in tech. And uh, in 2012, I was running teams in roughly 15 countries all over the world with 150 flights a year. So every second day I was set on a plane, which 15 years earlier someone told me I shouldn't be doing. I was in pain 20 days a month um, and was on painkillers. My physician said, you either quit your job or you're gonna end up with a herniated disc in a year or two. I was 35 at the time. So he said, go down the street, there's a studio that uses these suits and uh, it's a full body workout and it's gonna trigger every muscle in your body and it's going to do this without it lifting any weights because you shouldn't be lifting any weights. For context, I haven't lifted any weights in seven years uh, because I shouldn't be doing that. And it's awesome. It's going to help you. I, my physician, uh, I do this twice a week. Love it. And it's just 20 minutes. I say, okay, now you lost me. Like, you know, now it's too good to be true. It's just, he said, please go. Please go try it out. So I went, um, tried it. Um, team explained it to me. Two nights later, it was 20 minutes, it was like very intense, it's like, you know, really working, like you have nothing in your hands, and who has done it here before already? Oh, quite a few, yeah. Um, like, you have nothing in your hands and moving your arms is difficult, because you're working against your body, which also allows us to use concentric uh, muscle tensions and eccentric muscle tensions at the same time, so there's a lot of additional benefits um, that we're doing uh, with the muscle mass. Two nights later, I couldn't really get uh, off the toilet in the bathroom. I was so sore, like that was a problem. So for everyone who did it yesterday, you're gonna to curse tomorrow. Uh, it's pretty much, we can, we can set the clock after this because this is how biology works. Um, it, how does EMS work, uh, electromuscle stimulation? So we are sending, we have two nervous systems. We have a sensory nervous system, uh, we have technically three, but we have two nervous systems, sensory nervous system and a motor nervous system. And the motor nervous system sends electrical signals to the muscle to say, Contract, very simple terms. We know how this looks like, and we are emulating these signals, and we can do this by muscle mass, by intended contraction, by intended um, 
outcome. So do we want a cardiovascular twitch? Do we want a full muscle contraction? Do we want a tetanus that includes the fast twitch muscle fibers? We can all modulate this. And we're doing this for every muscle group separately. So the ones who already did a workout today, you have like all these different groups and you were like adjusting them, like, you know, how are the legs doing, how are the arms doing and so on and so forth. And this allows us to have the impact on the muscle without having the negative impacts on the joints. The other big benefit that we have is because it's on the whole body, we leave no muscle behind. So even if we go to the gym and we, for example, squat, we have our muscle groups that we really like and then others get left behind and then we are imbalanced and so it goes away. Like we just take care of it. You can't cheat. With this thing, you literally can't cheat. I brought um, outcomes of three studies. There's, so for context, the underlying technology is relatively old. It's like 40, 45 years in physiotherapy. We just took this and said, why only treat injured muscles? Why don't we treat healthy muscles before they get injured? Um, and it's non-invasive and it absolutely works. And if you can use it on injured muscles, so it's so soft and safe that you can use it on injured muscles, or you can use it on healthy muscles. Um, I brought three studies and um, I'm going for extremes because uh, the argument could be, okay, this is for athletes because it has been used by athletes for a long period of time. Um, Usain Bolt very famously used it through his whole career. We trained one of his colleagues uh, in Seattle five years ago, and uh, he said, okay, now I know why I went to Germany all the time, because this is where it's originally from. And pro athletes love it because they can get stronger, they don't have an injury risk, they already have a large load, and so on and so forth. So the argument could be, this is only for athletes. So I brought three studies that are the other end of the spectrum. So this study um, is from Germany. Um, they took 46 elderly women uh, with an average age of 75 years, plus minus four years. Um, and they went for one year, they did a workout every, uh, one and a half workouts, so every four days they did a workout. And the workout was 18 minutes. Don't ask me why they did 18 minutes, that's what the protocol said, that's what they did. And what we found is, we found a significant increase, sort of half a percent in pendular muscle mass, which is like arms and legs. Um, the, the lean muscle mass of the upper leg um, increased, leg extension strength increased by 9%. So just extending your leg. Um, fat mass reduced and body fat, uh, abdominal fat mass reduced. Where the control group at that age goes in the other direction. You lose muscle mass and you gain body fat. So technically we're reversing the aging effect. You get more of the one you want and less of the one that you don't want at an age where you normally don't work out anymore and where the common wisdom, like we saw the red graph, just goes in one direction. This is the most extreme case. Um, it was run by the uh, Institute of Cardiac, uh, Cardiovascular Surgery in Bad Oeynhausen. It's like the leading cardiovascular uh, university medical uh, institute in Germany. They uh, used, they, they took 15 patients. One had a transplant, nine had bypasses, um, diabetes, myocarditis, like, you know, really extreme cases. And they used this as post-surgical recovery. And they also, they did just half a year, two sessions per week. Um, the most gains were already after three months. VO2 max increased by 25% on average. The most case was 90% increase the most extreme case, 14% muscle volume increase, blood pressure drop, blood sugar drop, all the outcomes that you want. With individuals that basically in common with them are not able to work out anymore because they had such a heavy intervention. Um, on top of that, um, I don't know if you're aware of it, but they basically cut off your sternum, it gets opened. Um, so you, you, you can't lift because you can't have heavy loads because otherwise the wound doesn't heal a lot of aspects that would bar these individuals from working out, still possible, with great outcomes. The third aspect is a bone density case. Common wisdom is uh, you need heavy loads. Um, again, uh, 76 individuals, women, 75, hormonal problems in, in bone density that's related. Again, one year of training, one and a half workouts per week. Um, and we have increases in bone density, mineral density, both in lumbar spine and femoral neck, which are generally the problems that really arise when people are falling. 
Again, control group, uh, osteoporosis going down, this group is going up. What's very interesting when you now combine this, you have one thing that you're doing and it does all the things together. So you get more of this, get more of that, so it solves multiple problems at the same time. Um, what we also have, and we, have, we get these stories from customers and every week I get someone who you know, finds me on LinkedIn and says thank you and tells me their story. It's, like, it's, the, most, it's the most fulfilling job I've ever done. Um, where they literally say like, hey, um, true case, we have a testimonials later, uh, nine months ago, I got one of your devices. I was scheduled for hip replacement surgery. Um, and I wanted to do a prehab so that I get stronger, so when I go through the surgery afterwards, I'm stronger and you know, recover faster. So six weeks after I started Catalyst, I went back to my physician, and he said, I don't know what you're doing, but keep doing what you're doing. Uh, another six weeks later, he came back and said, hey, let's pause the surgery. Six months later, surgery is called off. I'm 85% out of pain, 95% of my mobility is back because now the muscles are so strong that they hold um, the, the femoral neck in, inside the uh, joint. So we have all these additional outcomes that we didn't plan for. It's just getting stronger at that age has outcomes that we never had before because we never got stronger at that age before. So basically, this is uh, the new curve. Um, I didn't make it increase because technically the science says it even increases, but I mean, it's good enough if we can uh, keep the level and we can basically extend it through the rest of our lives. So meet Catalyst, um, we put this into a product, the science and this technology. Um, it's my secret weapon, and it can be your secret weapon. Um, it's so small, it almost vanishes. Like I travel with this, it's like fits in my carry on. Um, it's easier to work out, it's faster to work out. It's the safest workout that we know because you literally have no impact um, and no, the, the muscle isn't strong enough to injure yourself. Uh, you always have an external force when you're tripping, when you're falling, when you, when you have momentum that you have to catch, this is when you get injured. And from an effectiveness, we can train every muscle that's relevant for the motoric system in your body uh, in twice a week, 20 minutes. Um, people use it more often if it's their only thing. If it's an add-on, they use it twice a week. Um, it can be both. So we have individuals that already say like, hey, I'm doing these workouts. I use it as an add-on. And then there are others who said, I don't have anything that I can work out with, like Renee, my patient that had the hip replacement. For them, it's become the only thing that they're doing. We have expert trainers. Um, the format is similar to what you would expect in 2022 as a um, fitness experience. The trainers um, basically show you everything that you're doing. And what we've built that's very immersive is when the trainers hit their own settings and they say like, hey, let's ramp it up, your suit reacts to it. So it's almost like this trainer is with you in the room um, and it's all the time personalized to you. So if let's say you and I, we would do the same workout, um, we would look at the same video, like there would be an action, but what actually happens to our body is always personalized to the individual and it learns over time. If you say, hey, I want a little bit more on my arms or more on my glutes and whatsoever, so the system is learning with you as you grow. Think about it like you're going to the gym and whenever you go to a certain machine, it would already have the right weight for you at the right time. You don't have to select it because the system is already doing it for you. I said you can travel with it. Uh, this is all what you need. It's like a third of a carry-on. You can put it all together. Um, very popular with individuals that are on the road a lot and don't have predictability. Um, my heaviest user doing COVID was a 60-year-old uh, American Airlines pilot. Uh, he said, I'm flying the world. I, every gym is closed. I'm in quarantine. I can only go to my hotel room. Took it. He lost, I think, 28 pounds within six months during COVID and said, like, all my colleagues had the opposite problem. Um, so very travel ready. Um, completely wireless, um, who've used it, you can walk around with this. Doesn't look any more like the picture that I showed you at the beginning. Um, very hygienic. Um, we just used material that are antibacterial in the first place, and uh, we made even the whole thing machine washable. So now I have an electronic suit that you can put on a washing machine. It's a little bit counterintuitive. Works. Um, and we're the only, this is actually the, the difficult part. 
will regulate a device. So in the United <coughs> States, powered muscle stimulators are a medical device. Um, and we're the only device that has consumer clearance. So you can basically now buy this where all other devices that you can go on the market, you go into a studio, they have to be run by a um, trained individual. Uh, we are very happy to do this because that's the big unlock to literally, you know, here, take it and travel with it and go. And you don't have to travel with your trainer or have to drive to a studio to actually do this. Thank you. And uh, we've got 10 minutes for questions. 10 minutes Please, for questions. Uh, uh, either jump to the microphone yes. or raise your hand. Yes, are Thank there you. any contraindications for patients yes. with... Yes. Okay. What are the contra... I would say with a defibrillator, yes. pacemaker. Yes, you cannot, use a, you cannot have a pacemaker. So a pacemaker is contraindicated. And it's not uh, because it will damage the pacemaker or, or it's dangerous for the heart. It is because the pacemaker will not know what the signal is coming from and would misinterpret it and would misfire. That's basically what's going on. So pacemakers are contraindicated. Um, if you're pregnant, we don't do it. Uh, during pregnancy and six weeks under pregnancy. After that, it's the ideal recovery workout uh, because it's an amazing pelvic floor workout. Um, we basically get rid of uh, incontinence problems and all these kind of aspects because it is a full body workout in these areas. Um, it's contraindicated um, if you have active lesions or like, you know, open skin wounds and, and so on and so forth. Um, but those are basically the main areas. If you have active um, surgery, if you were pregnant, um, if you have a pacemaker, those are the general areas. There's more details on this um, basically on the website, but those are the, the main pieces, yes. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, I've been using the German product, the Beamer, for yes. micro yes. circulation and improves it by 30%. But I can't feel it. Now, I, I tried this yesterday, and boy, I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just a little intimidated by how complex it was. Um, you know, I, I was visualizing buying this thing and then going uh, home and then, uh, you know, not being able, you know, I have a 30-year-old person that keeps me from melting down two or three times a day technically. So I just was kind of, uh, it's a complex product. Uh, what, what do you have to, uh, what, what encourages yeah, you? I'm, I'm a user of it, and I'll just say it seems that way, but once you put it on uh, once or twice, it's pretty intuitive. Uh, and I didn't find any real complexity. I budget, you know, 20 minutes exercise and 10 minutes to prep it and, and don it. Uh, but it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. And uh, uh, believe me, anybody here is way intelligent enough to use it on a regular basis. So you can't put it on wrong. That's the interesting thing. Because it's like, it's a vest and... A and, and the shorts and so on and so forth. So all the areas go where they're supposed to go. You don't need to learn, okay, this patch goes here and this patch goes there and whatsoever. So basically, um, after you do the purchase, um, you get a form from us and it collects sizing information. So height, weight, some circumferences. Based on that, your personal suit gets packaged and shipped. Um, we have a, um, a VIP onboarding, like for people that say like, hey, I'm not comfortable. I want a video Zoom onboarding, something like this. We have something like that. Um, and then afterwards, like Peter said, like when you've done it twice, like you learn how to wet it a bit. It has to be damp so that the signal can go through the skin. Um, and from there on, the, the software is taking it. You hit play on the, um, you know, on the video. And like I said, the trainers are like making the adjustments. And it's, it's, there's, a, there's an algorithm behind that that adjusts it to the person. Um, so, yeah, we have... Uh, like Peter said, everybody here in the room is well capable and you're a good representation of our existing uh, audience and uh, I have no doubt that uh, it's, it's very possible. Do you, uh, do we understand, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Do we understand how the EMS impacts the cellular structure inside you in the use? Um, so what we are doing actually is, um, it, it, good question. So we had to prove to the FDA like there are no side effects, uh, like no, no unintended side effects, let's say this way. If there's no side effects, then you have no effects. That's generally how the world works. Um, so it doesn't reach areas that we don't want to reach. And the only thing that we basically do is we are triggering calcium release in the end plates of the nerve. 
That's literally what we're doing. For everything else, we don't have the right frequency. We're not strong enough. We can't reach the heart. Um, we, we, we can't say like, oh, I trigger my myochondria or whatever. No, it's like we, we just are not in that um, strength and in that frequency. Um, so basically what we do is we trigger, we, we basically not trigger the muscle itself. The signal goes into the nerve and that triggers like the release. So it's as natural as possible. And the muscle cannot distinguish between is it coming from the brain or is it coming from um, our um, patch, basically. Uh, I have two families, an old one and a young one. Uh, the old one, girl and three boys down to, with eight grandkids, and then I have 18-year-old uh, and 15-year-old young sons. Mm -hmm. um, can you use this for the young sons? Um, eight, the 18, yes. Um, the FDA has cleared us for 18 and above, so adults. Yeah. Um, that's as much as I'm going to say. Okay. How much does it cost for a suit? Uh, they're $2,400. Jesus, I just got my Christmas presents for the old family. <laughs> <laughs> Quick question. Um, I travel a lot, and the hygiene of the suit, is that a concern when you travel? Yeah. So um, the way, first of all, uh, you have two, two components. You have the, the base layer version, which is you're going to sweat a lot into it. Um, we generally sh uh, ship two sets of them. A lot of customers like order four right away. Um, uh, having things hanging, you know, just air dry things in general is, is very recommended. Um, if you pack things up that are sweaty into a bag and then take it out a week later, generally looks, sure. if it gets white and talks to you, like n not so good anymore. Um, the, um, the suit itself, um, like I said, like if you hang dry it and then next morning you pack it into your suitcase and you leave or like wh whatever your, your structure is. And if you just are on the plane for six hours and if you arrive at your hotel or wherever you're going, you just take it out. It's the normal thing as everything that would be damp. So treat it as every other gym clothing. Um, the materials that we're using are like, for example, the soft shell is the same that Arcteryx use it for like soft shell jackets. It's like use it as any active wear that got wet and if you were in the rain and you put it in your suitcase take it out nothing just, else just wipe it off and air dry thank okay you. great thank you uh, can you take one last question sure. can you use it as a pillow um so uh, no <laughs> um and the reason i'm just thinking about it like actually like, <laughs> so everything is like airtight, but the um, electronics that basically the, the control unit, that's not submersible. Uh, why do you want to use it in pool? Yeah, just for rehab, just rehab, to make sure I don't injure myself, maybe get a little bit more, maybe get positive pressure. Do you do yoga? Yeah. That's the environment. It is literally, think about it, like we have actually like yoga flows that are like, you know, have add on like um, in intensities on, on certain muscle groups based on that. We even have flows that mimic the same movements. Um, no, don't go into the water. How many folks have not tried the catalyst suit yet? Can you raise your hand? So please, uh, uh, the Bjorn's team will be here through Friday. Yes, uh, through tomorrow. Through tomorrow, tomorrow. okay. Yes, through tomorrow. So please get a chance to, to try it. I think um, a lot are scheduled. Okay, yes. and I know, I know that uh, you've been production limited. Yes. Uh, and you're moving production from China to Taiwan now exactly. to increase yes. production. Yeah. And I know that you were able to accommodate people who wanted to order one last time, and I'm grateful, including myself. Yes. Uh, are you in a position to do that again? Yes, we again put a, a bunch of units aside so that everybody who wants can get one, even, even a few more, um, because we had customers last time. We said, I want three and five. And yeah. So, like, you know, we had this uh, as, a, as a problem. Yes, so we have put stuff aside, and there's a special website, and, you know, talk to the team. There's a, there's a code and um, every one of you got a, a bag from us, from Catalyst. Um, there's this code, go to the site. Um, it, it basically bypasses the, the wait list um, for everyone who's an attendee here. Great, yes. great. And then uh, f as I ask all companies, are you, are you raising capital? Or are you fully capitalized? Where are you in that journey? So um, we're not actively raising at the moment. We closed a large round um, about almost a year ago. 
Um, but we have a, a vehicle open, um, like a safe for individuals that are strategically, you know, interested and where there's win-wins um, that, is, that is open and available. Um, and I think you're going to be part of that, right? Perhaps. All right, let's give it up, Bjorn. Bjorn, awesome. thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for your work, pal. Thank you. Very, very grateful.